made homegrown brands competing indian brands which are homegrown can actually scale up and compete with international brands we started fable street with an honest vision to make real women feel beautiful and confident about themselves what does your current uh, r&d to the shelf journey you know what does that time period look like so our actually design to launch cycle is at most two weeks if you want to succeed in apparel and if you understand the businesses and strategy apparel is not a demand side game it's genuinely a supply side game Hello and welcome to ET Retail's exclusive series The Emerging Brands of Bharat powered by Great India Retail Summit 2024. The series features up and coming retail brands of India and today we are in conversation with Ayushi Gudwani who is building FS Life a group of brands solving the apparel and lifestyle needs of the modern Indian women. Hi Ayushi thank you for joining us. Hi Pallavi thank you for having me very very excited to be here. Ayushi I want to start by first knowing about your vision behind building FS life and you know from the inception to the current scale how has the journey looked like It's a very long question to answer but uh, let me try answering it to my best right When we started back in 2017 we were actually Fable Street and we were not called FS life back then um we started Fable Street with an honest vision to make real women feel beautiful and confident about themselves and uh, and the idea was that if you give a great and well fit apparel you know you have a natural confidence and an uplift in your mind and that was a real vision and the meaning behind it as i started fable street um the journey has been super hard super complex um we we launched we got the product market fit right we scaled we went we started with online then we went offline we went on marketplaces multiple channels so we've gone through a big like long journey over past seven and a half years um very exciting very hard but very fruitful very um comforting if i look back because you've genuinely built a brand which is meaningful to the consumers and they can relate with it and while doing so we've also transitioned from one brand to a house of brands and we have three brands now uh, which means we are scaling up fairly well and then trying to do a lot more in the space great thank you so much for that introduction ayushi uh, just to you know go a little deeper into the brand's presence in the market what has been your niche into making space for yourself in this competitive market i mean there is one set of players who are established uh who are conglomerates who have a house of brands of domestic as well as international brands then there's another set of players in which there's an addition which new brand launching every day yeah right? how do you find your niche in this market and how do you stay true to that so it's a very interesting question i the market is fairly cluttered um it has had a lot of players in the past right but end of the day if you also look at it there are there are no real players who have been able to scale up which does mean that there is a clear consumer unmet need which is you know not met as yet and uh, and that's how you identify the niche and for us when we went through the journey we realized that great fits for indian bodies when it comes to western wear is a clear under penetrated and an unmet need space and that's what needs to be catered and that's the you know premise on which we have built our brand on it's been about 7 years um the need still says and we are now probably the best in the market which fit well and then run this across so yeah so that's how we identify it 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 will always be cluttered but if you offer something to the consumers which others other brands don't uh, that is how you scale that is how you um, that is how you build your brand in the long run and that's the mindset that we always take so we are customer first we are completely working on addressing their needs and we will stay ahead of the curve by doing so in the journey of fs life and fable street in future um you highlighted that when you started it was fable street and then you launched uh, you know sub brands as well and now it's a house of brands what went behind you know making that decision and 
what was the maybe the feedback that you got from fable street so as to you realize there are more gaps in the market that you can fulfill yeah so while we launched fable street as an external brand right at the back end um of the organization we are actually a supply chain tech company which means that we do great delivery of apparel and high quality apparel which fit you well in a very short time frame like 2 weeks to build up inventory and 2 weeks to design that is a core premise of our organization so as we were building fable street which is one brand we basically realized that you know each brand takes time to be built and we have to invest that time for that brand organizationally we are much much strong than only one brand we can do a lot more other brands around it so the premise was actually saying that you know hey you're capturing one space of apparel already you're capable to capture entire apparel as a space so why not build more brands and sow those seeds early on so that you can overall in the long term build a large scale conglomerate so it is our aspiration and hunger to be bigger and better which led us to become house of brands because we believe we've had the capability um as opposed to uh, you know um just uh, just trying to use it as another set of brands to cannibalize each other so that's what's causing it Fable Street has played clearly in the Western wear as a space, and that's an independent space. And we are not going to build any conflicting brand in that space. The other brand that we have launched is called Pink Fort, which is in the Indian wear as a clothing, but a lot more modern sensibility. Again, that was a clear and met need. We have had a lot of Indian wear brands. I'm sure you know, right? Again, market is cluttered, but we don't have an Indian wear brand which addresses. sensibilities of a 20 year old or a 25 year old today who are looking for a lot more modern element with a hint of indian as to it so for us uh, pink fort is actually modern indian wear and that's the journey we are taking it's also doing very well and we have leveraged the learnings of fable street um, and then taken them to pink fort and then we are going to do the same to take it to other brands that we are going to launch got it um you you mentioned a very interesting point that you are a supply tech company at the at the core you know uh, to understand what uh, what does your current uh, r and d to the shelf journey you know what does that time period look like because uh, i believe as a consumer what i see every brand is racing to shorten that time period yes and we were the first ones in the market and i would say in the country to short in that time period um we started only as a just in time brand back in 2017 and um, and over time we have leveraged those learnings to do uh, you know fresh inventory build up in less than 2 weeks so our actually designed to launch cycle is at most 2 weeks and we can also run through and hit the uh, inventory in our stores or online within that time frame and 2 weeks so it is that that's how short we have managed to compress it and that is why i said it is a supply chain tech company than just uh, you know uh, being just a brand to the consumers very interesting i was just reading something about supply chain and there was this very interesting comment made that today businesses have to look at everything from a supply chain lens so it's that crucial today absolutely and if you want to succeed in apparel and if you understand the businesses and strategy apparel is not a demand side game it's genuinely a supply side game there are a lot of consumers who are hungry to get more and buy more um of course you have to build a brand and do all of that right but if you have to build an investable company or a company to be able to scale it is about ensuring that you are best in class on inventory and you are lean and you are much more efficient in supply chain because those are the things that kill an apparel business so you are absolutely right and i think that makes a lot of sense it's just that that's not a glamorous space that the consumers will understand you know it's great to be an influencer it's great to talk about the brand but the reality is that the hardcore operational elements behind which are in the supply chain uh, actually can make or break um, your brand so well, i think that was a very honest and a much needed answer very honestly thank you for that i i want to sort of shift gears and discuss about your distribution strategy a bit you have been an online first brand right so in terms of acquiring customers online when there is a new ad on instagram in between every two posts that i see today you know how does that uh, i mean what is the uh, dark side of it <laughs> from from the brand side 
you know, it's always been a competitive space. And I think uh, the way I always see on reflect on is that, you know, um, you are brand first. And that's always been the journey. You're brand first and your channel second. Um, when we started back in 2017, we realized that at that point in time, online, which is now called D2C, uh, brand.com is actually the most efficient channel to start building a brand and also reaching out to the consumers. Um, and that was the learning back then, which stayed for a significant amount of time. Um, but then eventually you also realize that, you know, uh, the cost of digital marketing is going up, the CAC's going up, etc. So you need to look at marketplaces, which are not brand building channels, but are clear access and sale channels. And offline is also going to be a crucial aspect in the journey. So in our head, from day one, we knew that we are going to be channel agnostic. So offline marketplaces and online, all three will be critical channels. We started online because it was the cheapest and the easiest to start. Um, the world's changed today. Uh, there's so many, uh, you know, brands hungry for your attention span uh, around this. I don't know if I would have started online only today. Um, we could have started probably offline as well. Interesting. You recently went offline, you know, what does uh, the strategy or plan of action look like in terms of uh, your offline presence? So we've always been bullish about offline. We were bullish about offline before um, offline was a rage. We actually opened our first store in February of 2020 when we were really small online as well. So it is more than it's almost four years ago is when we opened the first store. And then, of course, COVID happened and we had to can the offline strategy for a couple of uh, years. Um, so we have now gone back into offline with a big bang, being very, very clear that offline is one of the core channels for us to uh, scale, achieve profitably, profitability and also use it as a brand building strategy. Of course, it has to be done a lot more brick by brick because it is not that, you know, you can reach everyone in a day. You have to have physical stores and you have to move on, right? So we do intend to open up about 10 to 12 or uh, additional stores over the course of next one year. And then using them, we are going to scale and then we will scale a lot more aggressively and are looking at about 100 plus stores eventually post the first few stores that we have. We are already three stores in three months. That's very interesting. Um, I want to get a personal comment from you on, you know, how has it been for you as an entrepreneur? I mean, the journey, as much as it is uh, glorified, it, it is filled with challenges, right? So if you can share some uh, some of your personal learnings or maybe an experience, the challenges you've faced. Um. You know, I mean, I think everyone speaks about all the challenges uh, in any case, right? I think if I would talk about my personal learnings, it is a very hard journey. There is no question about it. It's really glorified to an extent that, you know, everyone wants to jump into it without knowing what it is. At the same time, um, any person who's strong enough, you know, once you're thrown into it, you learn how to swim and then you come out of it stronger on your own. So it is also a journey which is absolutely, absolutely worth doing. I think um, at a personal level and at a professional level, I have become a lot more smarter, sharper, hustler, you know, I learned a lot more execution oriented uh, aspects around the business become street smart trying to manage a team of like about 400 odd people um, which comes from you know the tailors to the high-end IIT irons right so it's just a very different ball game altogether and once you're thrown into it you know you go through and you're forced to learn all of those things which would be not natural to you in a course of this journey right I mean I think I have probably grown wiser and older uh, in the seven year journey that I would have achieved if I was in a corporate world or in any other world, which I may have taken another 20 years to reach there. So so that's what I would say. And that's been the personal takeaway. Uh, the second set of personal learning, I would say, is that, you know, when we are thinking about the startup, we feel that it is easy. It's not. And we get really consumed by it. We need to find a balance because as everyone says, and, you know, it's very cliched, but the truth is that, you know, it is a marathon. It is not a sprint. 
And I have led the last seven years, assuming that it's a sprint. It is my uh, time to reconcile that it is a marathon. And therefore, I have to build it right and run it the way I need to so that I can also do it at a pace and uh, do it the right way. Fabulous. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. I mean, every entrepreneur out there will uh, will definitely resonate with that. You know, uh, on that note, uh, if someone wants to come and work for FS Life, you know, what kind of people are you looking for? What is that one must skill that they must, you know, come with? I mean, I think there's not one must skill, but uh, we are very clear that we are looking for people who have really a lot of drive and a lot of uh, hustling mentality to do something big and do something different. I think that is one of the core skills that we look for. Without that, I would say that very hard to last in any startup, but even at FS Live, because we are all the time running. So until you have the drive to do something more and, you know, consistently be on your toes, it's not the place for you. I have just one last question, Ayushi. From an industry perspective, do you see India made homegrown brands competing with the Zara's and H&M's of, you know, of global scale? You know, Absolutely, absolutely, yes. That is why um, I started Fable Street and now FS Life. Uh, that has been the core, uh, you know, reason for me to believe and run this space. We genuinely believe that, you know, Indian brands which are homegrown can actually scale up and compete with international brands. The core premise of that is uh, India has been uh, a destination of supply for all of these brands. So there is, you know, product from India is no less than any international product. What we do need to get right, and this is a journey, is about the brand building and about being able to acquire the consumers because sometimes, you know, they get very excited that international is better, hai, right? You know, that's a consumer journey. But then once they recognize that, you know, it is making India is great um, around it. We are at no level, uh, you know, even remotely lower than any international brand in terms of quality and the product that we can offer. Uh, we have been the suppliers for donkey's years uh, to all the global brands, right? So then what stops us from making India for India? We've already done that as India for the world. Yeah, Wonderful. I think uh, kudos to that. And uh, that is the perfect note to wrap this conversation. And I'm super excited, you know, to hear more on this India specific uh, stories and what what India made brands do, uh, do going forward so i think sky is the limit yes absolutely thank you so much for having me it has been lovely uh, to have this chat thank you so much ayushi for joining and uh, for such candid and honest answers i mean i'm pretty sure the the audience is going to love this and uh, yeah thank you so much for joining